Hello everyone. We have a 35 year old man who come to you due to one week history of excruciating pain during defecation. Well, stool has not changed, but he had visible bright red blood on the surface of the stool. His medical history is consistent for chronic constipation and uh, when you do the rectal examination, show a posterior mucosal tear of the anus and there is a skin tag also. Well, in addition to stool softener and sit bath, which of the following is the most appropriate next step in the management? The right answer is E, that is topical lidocaine and nephidipine as per night guidelines. This patient has an fissure causing pain and rectal bleeding on defecation. Remember, patient has excruciatingly pain. And so the anal fissure are characterized by longitudinal tear, point to be noted, in the anal canal distal to dentate line. Now there are two important things. One is the longitudinal tear and dentate line. What is dentate line? I'm going to discuss, discuss in the later slides, but make sure that these fissures are, they are distal to dentate line. This background, now look into this. Well, it's a beautiful picture depicting various anal disorder. You can see they are the internal hemorrhoid, external hemorrhoids. Well, look into this lovely, this is a fistula, anal fissures, and anal abscess, various anal, this thing, anal or perianal problem has been shown lovely in this picture. Look into this. Hypertrophied anal papilla, anal fissure longitudinal, and th that is sentinel pile. What I want to show is there is a hypertrophied anal papilla occurs and is a longitudinal tear is there. With this background, we talk about more. They occur in the posterior midline. Spasm of the sphincter contribute to the pain and create tension around the wound leading to chronic fissure. Most features are related to chronic constipation. Look, our patient has a medical history is for chronic constipation. And that's the one which predisposed to fissure with high anal pressure and passage of heart stool. They can also be seen with frequent diarrhea or anal sexual intercourse, but more likely is chronic constipation is is more precipitating, of course. This is again is a local trauma which can create anal fissure. In some cases, pain may be so severe that patient will hold bubble movement, ex exacerbating the constipation. Like in our case, also the pain is excruciatingly. Chronic fissure can also be accompanied by external skin tag, central pile at the distal end that we saw in our patient also and you have seen in the picture also that there can be external skin tag can be there. Now how to manage initially? Dietary modification, high fiber diet, increased fluid intake that will soften the food, uh, to the, soften the stool and stool softener ultimately the purpose of this is to make a stool soft and it can easily pass. Sits bath to increase blood flow to the injured mucosa. Topical anesthesia, lidocaine can enforce comfort. Topical vasodilator like nephidipine nitroglycine can be used to reduce pressure in, in and increase blood flow to the anal sphincter, facilitating healing. So they are additional things which are going to increase blood flow and help in healing also. Now, I talked to you regarding dentate line. So let's let, let talk about basic concept about dentate line. It's located one third below the entire surgical anal canal, below them. The area between the dentate line and the anal verge is called as anoderm. This is non keratinized squamous epithelium has no structure such as hair follicle or the glands. They also soft when palpated and sensitive to uh, pain. So now let me show you a lovely picture. This dentate line. This is a dentate line. You can see it's in the in, in the lower part of the part of the uh, anus and this is the anoderm. And word, this is the part what we call as anoderm. Now, option A is incorrect. Colonoscopy and 
random mucus biopsy. Colonoscopy can rule out malignancy and inflammatory bubble disease in patients with persistent or atypical symptoms like hematochesia, abnormal stool caliber. Otherwise, invasive testing is not needed at all in this young patient. Option B, C, D, surgical intervention, lateral sphincterotomy, fissure excision is indicated for fissures that are refracted to medical therapy. Surgery is never the first option. Always go for the medical management first. If not, and symptom persists, then you think about surgery. Gradual dilatation of sphincter can provide a wider aperture for passage tool and interrupt the spasm, but can lead to fecal incontinence and possible recurrent fissure also. So again, that has to be taken. This decision has to be taken very carefully. Now, a quick, now, last minute revision point, a brief summary of anal fissures. What is the etiology of anal fissure? Local trauma, constipation, prolonged diarrhea, or maybe anal sex, inflammatory bubble disease, Crohn's disease, or malignancy. The clinical presentation includes pain with bubble movement, bright red blood on toilet paper or stool surface, most common at posterior anal midline, Chronic fissure may have skin tag at the distal end. Treatment, high fiber diet, adequate food intake, stool softener, sit bath, topical anesthesia and vasodilator like nephedipine and nitroglycerin. Golden line to remember, anal fissure present with the pain, rectal bleeding, on defecation. Treatment include high fiber, stool softener, sit bath, topical anesthesia, Visodilator, nephedipine, and nitroglycerin. Thank you very much.